Hello everyone and welcome back to ASP.NET Core 1.0. My name is Steve Bishop and in this video we're going to be talking about razor views. So razor views are those CSHTML extension files that we placed underneath the subfolders of our views folder. So here we're pointing out the customer list.cshtml, the index.cshtml, and other cshtml files that all exist inside of these subfolders of our views folder. Now by convention, these razor views go into these subfolders so that the MVC architecture by convention will know which controller those uh, those views belong to. So the customer list.cshtml is really only available to the customer's controller. And the same thing of course goes for the errors, the home and the member home files. Now these CSHTML extension files are really HTML with razor syntax embedded inside of the HTML. The razor syntax is very easily identifiable because it begins with the at symbol. We've seen examples of this razor syntax in previous videos, but I just kind of want to talk to you real quickly about the process that's happening here. The CSHTML file is passed into something called the razor view engine. And the razor view engine takes that file and spits out a completed HTML document for your user's browser to read. So the razor view engine will interpret this razor code and put out some sort of HTML code in its place for wherever that razor code exists. Now the razor syntax can be comprised of things like HTML helpers, but it can also include regular C sharp syntax. This is how we can do a for each loop or a for loop or a while loop within the HTML code and embed it with the razor syntax that performs these operations in C sharp. We saw that in the example where we generated this customer list file, where we actually got a list of all sorts of different customers. In fact, we know that we got 999 customers listed because we see the actual calculated count of how many were listed on this customer list file when we ran this code. Similarly, the Razor View Engine saw that we were looking for a first name, a last name, a phone number, and an email. And these were all fields that were filled in by using the Razor syntax. And then the Razor View Engine interpreted that Razor syntax to actually go and look for the actual name, the actual last name, phone number, and email of that particular customer. So we saw all of this at work in a previous video, but I just kind of wanted to introduce you guys to this concept of a razor view engine that is doing the interpretation of the CSHTML uh, extension files, and it spits it out as regular HTML. There's something else that the razor view engine can do, and it's extremely helpful for the way that we display our pages to our, our regular users. And that is we have an introduction of something called a layout view. Now, a layout view is really nothing more than a blueprint of where we want different components to be displayed on the web page. This blueprint provides us a way of, uh, of showing a static layout for each one of the pages, a unified look to all of the pages within our application. So in this example, we have a top area which can actually be regular HTML or razor syntax inside of this top layer or the top area that you see marked here with layout view. And that could be things like a banner or a menu that would be visible to the user no matter which page they are looking at. Additionally, there can be a uh, there could be view components like we see on the left hand side with the menu. And we'll talk about view components uh, a little bit later on in this course. But then we also have on the right hand side, the actual view, the index.cshtml or the customer list.cshtml or whatever the view is that was called by the controller will be placed inside of this area that we designate inside of the layout. It's these layout views that allow us to have very similar content be held across all the different pages within our application without having to rewrite that code for every single view that we want to show. 
Now what's interesting to note about the way that Razor layout views work is that the layout view is not called by the controller, but it's actually called by the view itself. The view is what determines which layout view is supposed to be associated with it. Now there is a way to set up a default view, which we will be talking about a little bit later, but for the most part, a view can actually determine which layout should be used when displaying it. Now view components are an independent view that don't rely upon a view or a layout, and they don't even rely upon regular traditional MVC controllers. They are essentially a component in, in, into and of themselves. Because of that independence, they can be called by either the layout view or the index view. It kind of depends upon where you want that menu to be displayed and who you want to have controlling when that menu or that view component is displayed. Again, we'll talk about view components much more in depth when we get to that particular video, but just understand that view components are an independent result or an independent thing from regular views and layout views. So to get started with layout views, let's go ahead and hop into our Visual Studio window and let's create one. So to get started, let's go to our Views folder, and inside of our Views folder, I'm going to create a new subfolder. And by convention, this, this folder should be called Shared. And the Shared subfolder in our Views folder is a folder that's specifically, by convention, made available to all of the views within our application. So regardless of which view we are calling from our controller, that view will be able to look inside of the shared folder. The controller itself will also look inside of our shared folder for any views that are referenced. So for example, if I took my index for our customers controller and I cut it and put it inside of our shared folder, even though I would be calling the index view from the customer's controller and the index view is no longer inside of the subfolder when the index action is called from our customer's controller and it would look for an index view to match it it would not find one inside the subfolder so it would then look inside of the shared folder for a view by that name of index and it would find the index view that we have here so just to demonstrate, I'm going to go ahead and run our application with the index view inside of this shared folder. Now, as part of calling that index view, we wanted to also pass along a customer key. So I'm going to go ahead and just select this, uh, this one that we already created for Tom Burke, because I don't feel like typing all that out. But we're just passing along the customer key is I don't care, so that we get Mr. Tom Burke. And we, of course, see the information that we would have normally should the index view have been inside of the, uh, of the customer's subfolder. Now, the bad thing about this particular arrangement is that if I also tried to go to the errors section and looked for index, it wouldn't find that index page inside of the errors, but it would find it in the shared, and it would try to call that index file but because I wouldn't be passing in a dim customer to it because the errors controller would be trying to look for some sort of index. Uh, you know, if, if I were to program the errors controller to look for an index, uh, you know, for an index file, it would look for that shared folder, but it probably wouldn't be passing in that dim customer. So we really have to be careful about which files we choose to put inside of the shared folder and which ones we're making sure we put inside of the subfolders appropriately. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this index file back and typically it's a really bad idea to create an index file and put it inside of your shared folder. However, if we are looking to build a layout view or something that's going to be shared across all of the different pages and be universally available to each one of these pages, then it would make sense that we should put it in the shared folder because it makes it easily accessible by convention. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to the shared folder and I'm gonna click on add, new item, and I'm gonna select the MVC view layout page. And by default, it wants to call it underscore layout.cshtml. 
Now this is another convention you should be aware of. It's not a requirement and it's not an MVC uh it's not an MVC convention by any means. It's a convention that programmers have done across the years of working with MVC, where if a page is not a view that is called directly by a controller, then it should be started with an underscore. So if it's a something called a partial view, you know, where it's a view that is only going to be part of a page, or if it's a layout, which really kind of is only part of a page, then you should be beginning the name of that uh, of that name with an underscore. So let's go ahead and uh, use this underscore layout and click on add. Now by default, there's some tags that already come with a layout view when we create one in MVC. We have the doc type tag to tell it that this is an HTML, so our browsers know to interpret this as HTML code. We have some uh, a HTML tag, a head tag, body tag, and inside of our head tag, we've got a uh, meta tag here to help the browser identify uh, some, um, some properties or attributes that we have on this document to help with responsiveness. The title tag is something that's going to then be displayed at the top bar of the browser. And in this case, we can see that the layout view is able to dig into something called a view bag. And the view bag is a dynamic collection. And we'll talk about view bag a little bit more, uh, a little bit later on, but essentially view bag is a dynamic collection. You can create a property on it dynamically and assign any value that you want to that property. And then the view can take that property and display it as, uh, as some sort of value similar to what we've been doing with models, where we had a, a model declaration at the top, and then we actually use the at symbol, uh, the razor syntax to display that information that comes from that code. Then inside the body tag of our HTML, we can see this render body method. And this render body method for the razor syntax, again, it starts with that at symbol, is where the layout view will actually place the content of the view that is calling it. So if our index view over here was to be calling the layout view, then the layout view would take the content of this index file and place the content just simply like a copy and paste right here into where it says render body. Okay, so that's essentially what the Razor View Engine would be doing, is seeing that render body method, take the content from the view and place it inside of that render, uh, that render body method. So if you recall from the slides, I was telling you that the view itself is what determines what layout should be used in combination with the view. And the way that you do that is through a declarative statement up here, where in, uh, I'm, I'm going to put it at the top of the body of my view, but I'm gonna put it below my model declaration. But I'm gonna use the at symbol and I'm gonna use the open and closed curly brace. And this is where we can actually set some properties of the view. One of those properties is the layout property. So I'm going to assign the layout property a string value that is the location on our domain where that layout view is located. And remember, it's in this shared folder. So I can go ahead and do something like this to be very specific. I'm gonna use the tilde to indicate go to the root of my domain or the root of my web page, and go to the views folder. And under the views folder, there is that shared folder. And then the shared folder, we have our lay our underscore layout.cshtml. So we'll do underscore layout dot cshtml. And then I'm gonna put a semicolon at the end of this because this is C sharp language. Okay, this is actual C sharp code that we are embedding inside of these open and closed curly braces. 
Now there is one problem. If I take the body of this content, of this index view, and copy it, and I go over here to the view and I paste it where we have render body, you should notice a problem. First of all, the HTML declaration or the HTML tag is in here twice, right? The opening, the open HTML tag is in here there, and then we also have it inside of the body. So we don't want that HTML tag. We also have the same thing with the head and the title and the body tags. All of these have already been declared by the layout in this case. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna back this out so we have our render body method back in there. I'm gonna to go to my index view and now I need to take out those parts that are already filled in by the layout, right? Because I don't need these tags since the layout view will be doing them for me. So I can go ahead and save that. And now with all of these things in place, now that I've got my layout declared that should be used for this view, and I've got my layout view here, the last thing I need to do is go to my customer's controller and I wanna set the title on the view bag dynamic collection to the view that I want to display for the index view, okay? And that was, I believe, the first and last name of the user that we're looking at. So I'm gonna go back here, and this is very simple. All I need to do is go to the view bag, and I need to set the title property, which, since this is a dynamic collection, those of you who haven't worked with dynamics, you may not understand this, but this property does not actually exist on this collection because it's going to be dynamically created, not by the compiler, but by the actual runtime. It's going to, at runtime, create this title property and then assign it whatever the value is that I am going to give it. So I'm assigning this title property, the first name and last name of the customer that we're displaying. So we'll do customer dot first name plus space customer last name. Okay, so we've assigned our view bag dynamic collection, the title property with the first and last name, which matches what we had previously in our index page for that title tag. Remember we had that title tag and it had the first and last name of the user. Now, instead, it's going to be part of the, uh, it's gonna be the view bag uh, collection that actually displays what that title is for this page. And let's go ahead and save this. And now we can go ahead and run the application. Okay, so once again, I'm gonna pull up Mr. Tom Burke's information. Go to the index customer key, I don't care. And we can see that it displays perfectly fine inside of our browser, but I'm gonna go one step further and take a look at the actual uh, element here. So we're gonna look at the code itself behind this document and we'll see we have our HTML tag, we have our head tag, we have our the meta name viewport with the content, remember that tag that we had on there. There's our title tag with Mr. Tom Burke as the title and we can even see it right there. And then we have our head tag, uh, closing head tag, our body, our div. And then we have inside of this div tag is where we begin rendering the content that came from the index file. So we have our DL, right? We start off the index CSHTML with the DL, right? And the doc type and the HTML head, made it, uh, made a name, all this stuff was generated by the layout instead of the index page. We can also see that Tom, right, for here on our first name, we have Tom as text in here, and I can't highlight it, it looks like, but that's Tom inside of those DD tags. Whereas if we look at the actual index page, model.firstName is razor syntax looking inside of the model, the dim customer model to find the first name. And that's just something that we've done before in a previous video. So if you have not had a chance to look at using this model.firstName, I suggest you go back to, I believe it's the, uh, the first video, you know, when we created a first MVC uh, application, we were starting to work with models.
So just to make this concept a little bit more uh, visually concrete to you, I'm gonna add to our layout page above our render body tag, I'm gonna add some content here. I'm gonna add, we're just gonna say, uh, you know, customer information. And we'll say that this is a um, H2 to make it nice and big. We'll put that around here. And typically you don't wanna put headers uh, as some sort of static there. It should probably be something like another view bag. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, view bag, actually, let's make it the title instead. Let's, that's probably a good idea. There we go. So now we just add dynamically the same information that we're putting in for the title. We're actually putting in the content of the view as well for our layout, okay? So this header is going to be part of the layout. It's not part of the index page, right? It's part of the layout. So every time we pull up a page that uses this layout, it will show this view bag title. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, run the application again. Now, if we go again to Mr. Tom Burke, we should now have a header that includes Mr. Tom Burke. Now, if we go back in here and I'm gonna change now the uh, customer list view. And now, since I'm gonna use the same layout, I don't need to include any of this HTML or head or body tag. I can take all of this out because now I'm going to once again, use the layout view. So we're gonna do layout equals, use the tilde to go back to the beginning of our domain, views, shared underscore layout dot cs html and now when we pull the customer list it's going to need just like what we had for our index view we need to fill in this title property with some sort of title so i'm going to go back to my customers controller and on my customer list action i need to set the view bag title so we're going to do view bag dot title equals customer list okay and let's go ahead and save this and run our application one last time now if i go to the complete customer list so i'm going to do customers forward slash customer list and hit enter this is going to give us the complete list of customers. That's 999 of them, but we see the title is now customer list. And if we go and refresh our Mr. Tom Burke's page, we still see that the view, uh, the, the, you know, the title for this view is Tom Burke, whereas the title for this view is customer list. And that information is able to be passed along from our customer controller where we're assigning to that view bag title the title that we want to use for the page but it's the layout that actually uses that view bag title to display inside of our header tags what the title of the page is so that is how you can create a uniform look across multiple pages and replace dynamically the information that goes into certain areas of that layout between those different pages. So I hope you guys understand this concept. It's a really wonderful thing. These layout pages are a fantastic way to create that uniform look throughout your application. And if you guys enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, favorite, subscribe to my channel, and also share this video because the more shares that you give, uh, you know, the, the more people come to view my channel and the bigger we can get as a community and we can all talk about these wonderful concepts in technology. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this video, like I said, and uh, I look forward to making the next one for you guys, and I hope to see you there.